Next up is the startup demo. The startup demo is a series of 10 five minute pitches by entrepreneurs with promising startups. The finalists have already applied among over 60 contestants and have been caref carefully shortlisted by a jury of in investors and entrepreneurship uh, supporters. The list of startup demo judges is as follows. Ali Karabey, Managing Director of 212. Amir Farha, Managing Partner of Beko Capital. Fadi Bishara, Venture Partner of Black Box VC. Tariq Nasser, Founder and Managing Director of Juice Labs and The Planet. Ayman Al Atiki, Partner at STC Ventures. Please, in the meantime, I, I kindly ask our judges to raise their hands so they can uh, be reached by the ArabNet staff and give you the judging sheets. Ramil Karmi, Advisor and on Corporate Entrepreneurship and CEO Office, uh, Zane Jordan. Ayman Al Atiki, Partner, STC Ventures. Tariq Saddi, Managing Director, in, uh, Endeavor Lebanon. Hanan Abdel Magid, CEO of Camelizer. Victor Kiriakos, Director of Afkar ME. .me. Karim Kobaisi, Lawyer and Managing Partner of Kobaisi and Ferengiye Attorneys and Counselors at Law. Please welcome our 10 startup demo finalists to the stage. Again, we'd like to repeat, please kindly the judges raise your hands so the uh, ArabNet team can give you the judging uh, sheets, please. Can you guys hear me? Um, hi, does the, anyone here know a good doctor? No? Okay, um, I came here with my dad from Doha, Qatar, and he's a little bit sick, so we're looking for a good doctor. Yeah? Just, just, like, just like me, there are thousands of people that are struggling with the same problem every day, whether in Doha, Qatar, or in the region, or anywhere in the main area. Now, there are several channels where you can find a good doctor. You can go ask your friends, you can go and search online, but there is no platform that connects all of these together and saves you from all the hassle. This is where Medi, sorry, this, this is where Medi comes, this is where Medi comes to solve the problem. Medi is an online platform dedicated specially to, to help you find a doctor that suits your needs. Now, the main things that we are offering on the website at the moment is um, verified user profiles of the doctors. All the doctors on our website are verified by the Council of Health before being posted on the website. Uh, the second thing we are offering is accurate map locations. That way you don't have to call the clinic and ask for directions. You are one click away from navigating to the clinic. Third, we are offering community-based source um, um, doctor reviews. Uh, that way you can, base, based on the people's reviews and their feedback, you can see if this doctor is suitable for you or not. And last but not least, we provide a crowdsourced um, waiting times that gets accurate every time a new user joins the, web joins the website and uh, inputs the, the time he, was, he waited in the clinic. Now, what do doctors get? Doctors get a targeted advertising platform in which they can know that the money they spend on this platform is going to invest back with a high ROI. And they also, get, um, they also get ROI analytics, ROI analytics and user insights to help the clinics and hospitals improve their services even further. The market size, market size we are trying to penetrate here so we're starting in Doha, Qatar, and hopefully expanding in the GCC region. The market size is $2.5 million. And soon, when we expand to the GCC, we are targeting $150 million of money spent on advertising in GCC. Now, this region is, um, is known as the most rapidly growing um, in the healthcare sector, and there are more and more private clinic clinics opening up every day. So this leaves a good market for a good startup in the right time to be launched. Now, if you look at other competitors that are also targeting the, the medical sectors, there are several startups focusing on either medical appointments or medical content. Yet, 
this platform that people go to find a good doctor is missing. Now, anyone can make an appointment, but not anyone, but who am I going to make an appointment with? Which doctor? Our business model, the way we'll make money from this uh, website, is we are creating a new platform dedicated for medical purposes. And so, uh, as doctors, as clinics, as pharmacies, insurance, insurances, they know that the money they spend on the marketing on our website is going to have a higher return because the users who are coming to our website are specifically looking for, med for a doctor or for these services. And so these are reasons they have to, that um, they should come to our website to advertise, not the newspapers, which no one reads, and not uh, on TV and other platforms. As well as that, we are providing, we are um, hopefully looking to provide premium doctor profiles in which doctors can add more photos and more videos about them to give them a more human experience and more transparency with the clients. Thus, they will get um, more reviews, more likes, as well as more exposure to the, to the people. Our website is currently launched. Uh, it's a responsive web application, uh, works on any platform. Uh, please visit it. And if you have any feedback, please let us know. My name is Abdel Al Khinji, co founder and technical lead in Medi. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Let me start by asking you a simple question Have you been shopping for anything lately? Believe it or not, finding where to buy what you want isn't actually so simple. The problem is there is hundreds of e commerce stores online and much more opening every week in the region with the e-commerce explosion we are seeing right now. And it's impossible to visit each and every online store to find the product you are, you are looking for. It's even more difficult if you are trying to search offline. Imagine visiting every and each and every store in Limol to find a certain, to fi to find a certain product. So uh, uh, the problem uh, that uh, there is um, uh, retailers have the products, but they are unable to find uh, the shoppers who want them, to reach all the shoppers who want them. And the shoppers want the product, but they are unable to find all the retailers who are, who are selling them. That's why we created and built ShopShopMe.com, the region's first and only search engine, which allows you, the shoppers, to search across online and offline retailers as well. How it works? Or before I tell you how it works, let's say you type, you go to our shopshopme.com, and uh, you type iPhone and click search. We will show you all the retailers in the country, whether online or offline, having the iPhone, selling the iPhone. And then you can filter based on price, um, delivery speed, uh, warranty, color, or even location. You might find out that the small mobile shop located two streets across your home has the iPhone X stock with the best price online. How it works, it's really very simple. Uh, every day we send thousands of spiders or robots or crawlers to all the online retailers um, uh, to crawl and to collect all the data and the products they have online. And for the offline retailers, we have a back end where they can upload directly their, uh, their products or they can send them to us by FTP or, uh, or email. All this data is stored in our database, and, uh, and later on, the shopper can search uh, uh, among it in real time. How we make our money? Our business model is a typical SaaS flat monthly subscription fee. We have five tiers under this, uh, under this uh, model, ranging from listing an offline retailer in our search engine to providing content and reports to the sexiest product in our portfolio, which is the intelligent management where uh, retailers, brand manufacturers, or even governments can see a very deep competitive intelligence against their competitors in real time, where they are cheaper, more expensive, uh, pricing movements, inventory, promotions, offers, and more than 100 data points. Um, retail business in the GCC is $271 billion. And uh, the online retail is growing 35% year over year, and the offline is growing 7.1%. 88% of the UAE population is now online, which gives our search engine uh, a large and a huge potential reach. That's why, and that's the reason we started in the UAE, but we are uh, expanding this year to KSA, 
uh, next year to the rest of the GCC, Levant, and North Africa, and by 2017, we'll be ready to the world domination. Like any business, we have competitors, but in our case, they are mostly indirect competitors, um, like price comparison websites, but they are uh, uh, limiting themselves in um, uh, electronics, specific categories such as electronics and mobiles, um, and Google, when you use Google for a search for a product, uh, you get all the sort of rubbish, including articles, reviews, and YouTube videos. We are not limiting ourselves in any or a certain categories at all. Whatever exists in the retail business, we will cover it. That's why we believe that we created a blue ocean market where we aim to be a market leader and a dominant player. This week, we uh, launched our second completely redesigned version of our website as long as releasing our iOS and Android apps. Our mission is simply to democratize retail. And to do so, we had to build a new Google, but just for retail. Thank you so much. All right. So did you know that now, now and now, three patients have just walked in to an outpatient clinic? By the time I finish this presentation, 275 patients would have visited an Egyptian doctor. Yes, this is only in Egypt. Let me do the math for you. According to the Egyptian Ministry of Health, the number of annual patients or visitors to an outpatient clinic or in an emergency department is 28.5 million patients each year. That's almost a patient a second. Hello, I'm Dr. Ashraf al -Fai. So what do we all do when we really get sick? Well, we either know a good doctor, or just like the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you can ask a friend. And just like the show, that friend may give you the wrong answer. The only difference is that on TV, the wrong answer probably will not kill you. Let me start off by saying that this is not just a website. What we offer is a complete medical solution. UtlubDoktor.com offers patients direct access to a doctor's resume, including pay, insurance, schedule, and so on, so that patients can be able to target which doctor best suits them and not vice versa. Patients have the option of booking a doctor at their clinic, or for the first time ever, patients can now have the doctor come over for a personal house visit. Now this saves countless hours for patients in traffic and in waiting rooms, because saving time means saving money as patients get to select which doctor best suits their financial needs. Patients also have the ability to rate these doctors according to their performances and other criteria. Now this is key, as this will give more of an insight for patients when selecting a doctor, and will make the doctor make an all-out performance when conducting a medical checkup. Using our mobile app, the critically ill or emergency victims can now relay their locations directly to the Egyptian ambulance dispatch units so that they can get there quicker and easier, all at the click of a button. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that the boundaries for online medical services are virtually limitless. And what makes it even better is that it's practically untapped in the local $14 billion market. Now, speaking of the Egyptian market, it is known to be one of the greatest markets in Africa and the Middle East. An internet penetration of 48%. And as we all get sick, our target audience is that 48%. That's 43 million users. Egypt's workforce is also the largest in the Arab world, at three doctors and 3.6 nurses for every 1,000 patients serving at 1,600 hospitals across the nation. Now, these are pretty competitive numbers, because competitiveness in the market is a very constructive thing. Without Yahoo, there might not have been any Google. Without MySpace, there might not have been any Facebook. Additionally, without competitors like Vizita and Doktorna, there might not have been any Utlub Doktor. Our competition solely focuses on clinic reservations, where we have a multitude of services, including clinic and house reservations, doctor ratings, and emergency services, all at half our competition's prices. I believe it's not about who does it first, but it's about who does it best. Things like this are all key indicators to a successful online business. It is why we were able to achieve over 1,200 doctors on board our website, and we've only just launched a beta version roughly two months ago. Our traction is also very promising. With over 150 daily visits and three to five daily bookings and over 30,000 fans on social networks. With reference to payments, 
our revenue stream is quite simple. We have four methods of income. The first is through doctor members that pay an annual membership to get an added value benefit of becoming a paying member. The second is through visiting specialists that pay a flat fee on any given house visit. The third is through hospitals and centers, and finally through corporate sponsors and advertisers. But best of all, the patients pay absolutely nothing to enjoy our services. Our team represents a combination of ambition, experience, and a dedication to excellence. And I believe that the success of this project depends on the understanding of a patient's needs. And no one can do this better than a physician. My partners, Mr. Amr al an ex-internet security systems and an entrepreneur himself who's in charge of our business development. Mr. Tamer al an ex sodic and currently Jumia.com's marketing head who's in charge of our corporate marketing and PR. A combined experience of over 20 years. We've had the pleasure of being trusted and funded by the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology at Thief. And I'm sure you, as well as I, believe that utlubdoktor.com has enormous potential. So, the next time you feel a little bit tired and you decide to ask a friend, hopefully now the answer could be utlubdoktor. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm David Lashad, one of the founders of Yellow. And before I tell you about our company, let me tell you about payments in the Middle East. Our region is comprised of 15 or so countries, each with its own currency and financial system that communicates poorly with the region and the rest of the world. So experience the nightmare of sending money from here to Dubai. Just the other day, Marwan, one of our team members, sent $1,000. And not only did it take three days to arrive, he was charged $60, and he lost $20 to $30 on the conversion. Or, for example, online merchants. The vast majority of online merchants still receive their payments offline, in cash. Cash on delivery accounts for 80% of all online transactions. And that is a hassle for everyone involved. It adds $10 to $30 in cost, and it's just backwards. In our digital and online world, why are we still using offline payments? Payments in the Middle East are broken. What if money could be as simple as email? So this is where Bitcoin comes in. Bitcoin is a new and revolutionary digital currency and payment system designed from the ground up for our increasingly digital and global lifestyle. It's completely borderless, accessible to anyone with a phone or an internet connection. It provides virtually free and instantaneous money transfer anywhere in the world, and it's easy. One-click payments. That's why I like to call it email for money. Fast, virtually free, easy, and global. And Bitcoin is taking the world by storm. Today, there are more than 100,000 businesses that already accept Bitcoin for payments. Big brand names like Microsoft and Wikipedia. We're seeing 50 to 100 million dollars in transaction being processed on the network every day. And half a billion dollars have already been invested in Bitcoin companies from big brand names like Google Ventures or the New York Stock Exchange. So we're still at the early stages with Bitcoin in the Middle East. And this is where we come in. Yellow, our company, builds products that make Bitcoin accessible and easy to use in the Middle East. One of our first products is YellowPay, a Bitcoin payment gateway. Essentially, we make it easy and risk-free for businesses to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. So as a business, why should you accept Bitcoin with Yellow Payments? Well, first off, it'll save you money. We only charge half a percent per transaction compared to credit card and other online payments that charge 3% or more. That's six times cheaper. And not only that, we're now offering this entirely free, 0%, for the first $100,000 in transaction. Second, Bitcoin payments is much more safe and secure than credit cards because without getting into technical details, every time you make a payment, no sensitive information is shared on the network. Third, Bitcoin payments gives you access to customers from all around the world. They just need access to a phone or an internet connection. And finally, getting started with Yellow is completely free, and you can do so in less than five minutes with our easy tech. And in fact, it's a great solution for your customers as well because it's a completely streamlined payment experience. Customer picks up the phone, scans the QR code like this one, clicks one button and done. Point and shoot. And we're building much more than just a Bitcoin payment gateway. 
we just released a Bitcoin voucher product in Lebanon, making it easy for anyone to buy Bitcoins with cash, credit card, and almost every single, every payment method accepted in the country. So with zero marketing, we saw this product grow to several thousand dollars in sales in just the first two weeks of launch, and that blew us away. So we're in the process of releasing similar products in neighboring countries. And to wrap up, let me tell you a bit about our company and the team behind Yellow. Yellow was founded a year ago by James and I. James with more than 10 years of experience in software development and myself with uh, financial and operational experience in management consulting. And we're now a team of five, two on biz dev, three on dev, and we're looking to hire. So get in touch after the pitch. And finally, we've successfully raised the first seed round that should keep us going until the end of the year, at which, at which point we'll be closing a next round. So we're starting our next fundraising effort in the next few months. We'd love to talk to investors that are excited about the potential of Bitcoin in the Middle East. With yellow, payments in the Middle East just got easier. Thank you. مين منكم في ينكر أهمية التعليم؟ لما أقول تعليم راح يخطر على بالكم المدرسة أو الجامعة، وهذا جزء مهم. بس التعليم حرفيا بيشمل أي شيء بالحياة. من القصص البسيطة جدا جدا مثل شو هي أحسن طريقة لنشر تفاحة؟ لمواضيع معقدة أكثر مثل كيف نعمل موقع على الإنترنت أو موبايل أبلكيشن نعرف أكثر عن الحرب العالمية الأولى أو الثانية وحتى كيف ممكن نزيد إنتاجيتنا أو حتى مهاراتنا القيادية اسمي حسن كنج أنا وفراس وزني أسسنا ميناورسيتي ميناورسيتي عبارة عن منصة تعليمية للمتحدثين باللغة العربية عنا مجموعة من الدروس باللغة العربية بيقدمها خبراء مختصين بمجالاتهم العلمية والعملية هدفنا العالم العربي وتحديداً اللي بيحكوا باللغة العربية وفي ملايين من الأشخاص يلي هدفهم الحصول على محتوى عربي مصور بجود كواليتي أو بنوعية جيد جداً اللي بيميز من أفورسيتي غير إنه باللغة العربية إنه عنا تركيز كتير كبير على الكواليتي إن من ناحية التصوير أو من ناحية المحتوى أو الشخص يلي بيعطي هيدا الكونتنت. على فكرة أغلب الأشخاص يلي بيعرفوا من أفورسيتي عرفوا فينا من خلال جوجل وهذا دليل على نجاحنا. بنافس من أفورسيتي مواقع مثل ليندا دوت كوم ويودمي دوت كوم. الفرق إنه هيدي منافسة غير مباشرة لأنه هن باللغة الإنجليزية. بينما بالعالم العربي ففي موقع إدراك. الفرق إنه إدراك هو قريب لكونسبت الموك يلي هي ماسيف أوبن أونلاين كورسز مبدأ الموك لما يشرح كورس بيكون قريب للأسلوب الأكاديمي الجامعي مع ساعات طويلة وأثبتت الدراسات إنه هذا الأسلوب عادة بيخلي أغلب الأشخاص وفوق 80% إنه ما يكملوا الكورس الفرق إنه نحن المواد يلي بنعطيها بتكون بوقت أقصر ودغري وبطريقة عملية ودغري بتوصل الفكرة من أفورسيتي هي منصة تعليمية مجانية فيكن تفوتوا تتعلموا بلا ما تدفعوا شيء يمكن عم تسألوا كيف نطلع مصاري في عنا أربع طرق لنطلع مصاري أولاً أنتوا فتوا على الموقع بيكون تحضروا عن التصوير الفوتوغرافي تحت الفيديو بيكون في إعلانات موان فيكن تشتروا كاميرا أو موان فيكن تشتروا عدسة تصوير فبهاي الطريقة الإعلانات بتكون موجهة للمستخدم وما بتزعجه أبداً وبنفس الوقت هي طريقة لحتى نطلع إرادات الشغلة الثانية هي طلب درس خصوصي أو استشارة حضرتوا لنقول مادة خاصة بالبرمجة بس حابين تلتقوا مع الأستاذ حتى تتعلموا أكتر من خلال منافورسيتي فيكن تكبسوا على طلب درس خصوصي أو استشارة ونحن بنعمل اتصال بينكن وبين الأستاذ وبنحصل على عمولة من هذا الموضوع الشغلة الثالثة يلي هي كتير مهمة بالنسبة لنا منافورسيتي هدفها تخلق بيئة تعليمية متكاملة يعني بالإضافة للموقع الموجود على الإنترنت بدنا نصير نعمل ورش عمل ودروس على الأرض بهيدي الطريقة الأشخاص فيهم يلتقوا مباشرة مع الأساتذة ومقابل مبلغ لكل ووركشوب هلأ المشكلة بهاي الطريقة أنه محصورين بمكان معين مشان هيك رح يصير في عنا شركة بمختلف البلدان العربية هن مدرسين نحن منوافق عليهم بيعطوا كورسات تحت اسم منافورسيتي نحن منأمن لهم الإعلان والتسويق وكل هالقصص وبنفس الوقت منتقاسم الربح معهم الشغلة الأخيرة يلي هي لاحظناها إنه نتيجة خبرتنا بلشت العالم يلي بتعمل ورش عمل هي تطلب نحن نصور له فصرنا نعمل هيدا الشيء ونأخذ منه مردود هاي بتفيدنا بشغلتين الشغلة الأولى عم نحصل على مردود مادي لمينافورسيتي الشغلة الثانية المحتوى يلي بنحصل عليه أكيد بعد موافقتهم 
عم نحطها عنا على الموقع واكيد هن بيحصلوا كمان على فيديو مصور فيهم يستخدموه بالطريقه يلي بدهم اياها شغله اخيره قبل ما اختم نحن بحاجه لمدرسين فاي شخص بحس حاله خبير باي مجال في يتواصل معنا نحن موجودين بالمؤتمر لليومين الجايين شكرا The story of Elimu is nothing but mine. In 2011, when I decided to leave my engineering job and join an MBA program, I was looking for change. I wanted to do something with my career that has a positive social impact, but I didn't know yet at the time what that would be. Luckily enough for me, I was matched at my MBA school with a professional coach, and he helped me evoke transformation in my life. He helped me find the change that I was looking for. Now, from that experience, there are four things that I learned. First, I learned that coaching is extremely impactful in evoking transformation with people and helping them find their life purpose. Second, I learned that it's hardly accessible for the average population. Third, it's very expensive and only available to the very few who can afford it. Fourth, and most importantly, the matching process is very core in determining the success or the failure of the relationship. So from where I was standing, I thought it was a social responsibility upon me to help others have equal access to coaching and mentoring, because every single one has the right to have access to change and to evoke transformation in their lives. So I started Elimu. It's an African word that comes from the Arabic word ilm, meaning knowledge and education. And what Elimu helps you with is it helps every single person here find the right coach at the right time at the right price. Now, in today's market, this is not possible. It's not possible because first, most of the market players are focused. The market is segmented, and all of these players are focusing on a niche, whether it's a specialty area niche, like, for example, developing certain specific skills or habits, or whether it's a market niche. Another important thing is that the biggest area in the market where most of the transactions take place, like organizations, corporates, and education institutions, is still untapped. Let me give you a few figures. In the United States, 2.5 million students join college every year. Out of these 2.5 million, 44% fail to graduate after six years of college. Now, this is a market that is in desperate need of guidance. Let me give you another example. 80% of corporates and SMEs in the West have internal coaching programs. And in the next three to five years, 60% of these companies are expecting to expand their coaching programs to tailor not only to the needs of executives and talented people, but to all employees. Now, this is a growing market. So what do we do? We are an online marketplace that is connecting the dots. And to do that, we, have, we are building tools, guided content, and processes along the three verticals of a marketplace. The three verticals of a marketplace are connecting and matching, facilitation processes, regulation and feedback. Today, existing players in the market are focusing on certain niches. They have failed to target all of the market, or perhaps they just chose to focus. But they haven't been able to raise their market share to more than 6% in four years. We are not here to compete with them. We are here to complete the market landscape. We're not here to specialize, but rather to build an integrative solution that will allow and enable fair exchange and efficient exchange of coaching services in the market. To do that, we are following the freemium premium business model. Why? Because we want to lower entry barriers to users. Juniors, whether on the demand or supply side, will have access to the services for free, and juniors and companies will be charged a premium fee per year. We are expecting to reach 10,000 users in year two and grow our market of freemium users to, to 10 million in year nine. But to be able to do that, we need to build the right IP because we are building tools and processes. And to be able to build the right IP, we're expecting a cost of half a million dollars in year one. 
We are expecting to break even in year four. And so, what we have achieved to date in the past five months since our inception is launching our Alta platform that has the freemium services available to everybody. You can now log in and start using the service for free. We have also successfully been accepted into an accelerator in the Netherlands, which allowed us to study the market analyzing and build the right business model for it. And so far, we have made successful traction with one MBA school, one education institution, one consulting company, and two corporates here in the Netherlands and in Lebanon. Next, we are looking to raise funds by the end of 2015 and looking to build a team. Thank you. Hello. Me, Mohamed Zaki, and my partner, Mu'taz Al Amir. We have, we have got mutual friends uh, whom we meet on a cafe in Cairo. These friends, they have a serious problem. One of them owns a clothing retail and the other one a pharmacy, uh, three pharmacy branches. They never ever know what's happening in their accounting and they're always complaining about how accounting is very difficult. When they recruit an accountant, they never get the job well done. And they never know what's happening in their warehouses as well. One of them purchased the software for $3,500 and after a couple of months, the database got corrupt, and he never knew, uh, and, he never, and he was never able to reach them. So, me and Mahtaz at that time started thinking. We already had an ERP which was very stable and tested, and we applied it and we implemented it in two factories in Egypt. Currently, it has 5.5 million records and 280, 280 users. So we thought, why not we take this ERP minimize it, and help our friends out. We also found that there are 200, we made questionnaires with 200 other retails, and we found that they have the same problems. So, the result was Nazamli, integrated, automated, on the cloud, sales, accounting, and inventory for your business. That is not it. Uh, now, the slides are wrong, it's the old presentation, okay? Now, our friends, they sit with us on the cafe and they look at this page, which refreshes every 10 minutes, and uh, they can see what's happening from uh, things going low on stock and uh, their sales in real time from all the branches and everything. Uh, during our questionnaire, we found out that we can also add a kind of a user retention, a customer retention and user interdependence in our system by adding the pay-to-pop advertising. Let's assume, first of all, our target market are, are any retail, clothing retails, pharmacies, anything like that. So let's assume to understand the pay-to-pop that we have 1,000 pharmacies using Nazamli. There are suppliers who want to reach these uh, pharmacies. They pay us per pop, per customer, and we transfer their advertisement to the retails. And it comes up on this page, which is very easy. Now, our, where is the market gap? Where is our opportunity over here? There are two types of, of uh, competition in Egypt, in Egypt and in most of the Middle East. Some, uh, some uh, services are too expensive and others that is completely unaffordable to our market segment, and the other is very cheap. Cheaply, poorly written solutions, and our questionnaire showed 40% data loss with them, as they're usually this top solutions. In Europe, coming from Northern Europe and Scandinavia, and taking over Europe is economics, which is making lots of revenue now. And in Australia, they have Xerox, which is providing the same thing like Nazamli. Economics and Xerox, have taken over the places where they're in, and we hope that we will be here in the, in the Middle East. There is a market gap that we need to fill. It's 57,000 retails in Egypt alone, and that's a minimum number. Our, okay. 
our uh, revenue streams. Our revenue streams is from the membership fees and the pay-to-pop advertising. Once we reach 500 car retails, we're going to add a front-end shop uh, to all the retails where, where they can accept uh, orders online. And we'll also guide them into how to manage and uh, like contact their customers and manage their logistics and transfer the goods to their customers as well. This is an investment for opportunity, which we believe and are certain, in fact, uh, that it has a market that needs it, and it's based on a stable solution. As I told you, it's, we have implemented the solution in two factories, and we are very confident about our solution. Thank you, and have a great day. Good afternoon. My name is Rala Fayad. I'm the co-founder and COO of MySet.co. Let me tell you about our journey. My partner and myself have over 20 years of combined experience in the hospitality field. During that time, we identified the event planner's pains and the hectic process of planning an event. So we came up with MySet.co, which is the first online solution for event booking and management through electronic requests for proposals, and the bidding system, we connect you, the event buyer, and the supplier in one platform. Why are we different? Because we are the only platform globally at the moment that mm, we're the only uh, platform at the moment that provides this service. Our audience, any event planner that hates planning events and is always hectic about it, is a client for us. A few of our customers are already mentioned above there. I would like to emphasize about the market of MICE events. In Jordan, it's a $50 million industry. In the middle, in the MENA region, it's a $1.2 billion industry. But we focus on what's the red part there. Globally, it's a $1.16 trillion industry. That's a market. At the moment in Jordan, we're focusing on the 300 corporate bookers, the top ones, and we've already engaged with 35% of them. And I would like to sh share something today, uh, which is our latest ach achievement and customer database, where we have started talks with the United Nations in Jordan, and they have asked us to use MySit in a bit more specific way. So we'll be signing with them in the next few weeks. Competitive advantage. MySet is not just another startup. We're not event managers or planners. We have a vision to change the event tech industry, making it easier for an event planner. Our, co our, co our customers, sorry. Uh, our competitors are based in the United States at the moment. In the MENA region, we have competitors who are event planners or travel agents. So we beat them with two significant options that we created. A one-stop shop platform. You don't only book your venue, you can book your group travel arrangements, your audiovisual, your airlines, your roll-up banner, AV, everything in one platform. The rest mainly focus on the hotels and the venue. We will have Arabic language to support the MENA region. After the research, we have found out that in Saudi Arabia and Qatar and a few other states, they're reluctant to go online and book because they do not speak that good English. So this product will be able to penetrate the Gulf market that way. As a startup, we don't have a lot of money, so we're bootstrapping. Most of our money goes on web development. We're looking for a huge future for MySet at the moment, not only a bidding and negotiation system, but live availability for meeting rooms, which will be the first time done in the hospitality field. How do we make the money? 80% of our, of our revenue is from the commission. We sign with the vendors and take a 5 to 10% commission. The customers do not pay anything at all for now. Revenue shares with our partners and online advertisement. In 2017, we will use the subscription fees for the vendors and a small booking fees for the client. It cannot be free forever. So I stand here today. Um, 
telling you about my set. I'm sure a lot of event planners are in the audience at the moment. I would love if you can go online or pass by the booth and have a demo. For the investors, we are raising $150,000 for our one-year plan. That includes increase of the, web, of the workforce, development of the website. We want a pure technical website and a software. And we want to start penetrating, as you saw with the numbers, the MENA market, where the money all comes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Samir Tarazi, and I'm the founder of Red Troops. Red Troops is the eBay for in-app advertising. So let's go a few years back. I created my own apps and launched them into the stores. And then I found out the hard way that I needed to spend a little on marketing. So I set a little budget on the side and then started to find the right channels to spend that money on. I found a couple of ad networks. And to my surprise, I lost about $1,000 in less than 24 hours. I had no clue what just happened with my money. And my ROI was actually close to zero. And that experience was really bad. I never wanted to do it again. Unfortunately, that's the way in-app advertising is today. You see, you have all these advertisers throwing money into an ad network, which is a true black box. It's a black box because you have no idea where your money is going, which apps are going to show your ad, and so you just trust that the ad network will do the best work possible to place your ad in the right place and get you the best ROI, which rarely happens. So from an app owner perspective, you connect to these ad networks and start getting all these random formats of ads thrown into your app. You also have no way of telling, how much am I going to get paid by the end of the day? So what I'm saying, it's a really lousy experience for both sides. And for it to go mainstream, the time is now. People are spending three hours a day using their smartphones. 85% of that time is actually spent within a mobile application. And that is proven by the fact the in-app advertising market is going to grow a staggering 5x in the next five years to become a $17.1 billion market. So like I was saying, for it to go mainstream, it needs to be simple and straightforward for anyone to understand from step one. And that is what Red Troops is here to do. You see, we start off by helping you build the ad itself. Through our website, you access an ad builder. It's a super simple drag and drop tool where you can add images, videos, a 3D viewer. Let's start creating awesome ads and get rid of all the crappy ones. So you're done creating your ad yourself. You can even choose from a template. You don't have to uh, you know, write a single line of code or even use a designer. So you created an awesome ad that drives higher conversion in just minutes yourself. And then you access the marketplace, where you can browse offers that have been put up there by app owners. And you can look for the apps that suit you best in terms of budget, countries from which the downloads are coming from, etc. Once you find the app you like, you go ahead and engage directly with the app owner to buy that offer in terms of a fixed price or a bidding campaign. So we've gotten rid of the bad uh, mobile advertising experience and replaced it with a normal e-commerce experience that you guys actually enjoy. So. You guys are going to say, there's a big chicken and egg situation here. Cool, we got rid of that. What we do is, we go after large and premium advertisers, people who have millions of downloads or millions of weekly active users. What these guys do is they drop ad networks because they don't want any sort of ad thrown into their app, and they don't want somebody taking a big chunk of their advertising revenue. So they start doing direct ad sales. But direct ad sales are costly. You need a sales team to go back and forth and close that deal. You need a technical team to actually impl implement custom ads within the app. And that takes a lot of money and time. But with Red Troops, we've repackaged the whole thing in terms of a white label solution. And we become a premium uh, publisher's self-serve advertising platform. So you can throw a URL over to a prospect advertiser. They can build the ad, choose an offer, view real-time analytics about its performance without talking to a single person from your team. You see, we are actually here to fix in-app advertising. And uh, I'd like to say, if you're an app developer who's just sick of it all, 
or an advertiser that really doesn't understand what mobile advertising is, we'd love to talk to you and show you some more. And if you're an, uh, an investor that actually liked what you just saw, you're in luck. We're both in luck. We're actually going to start a new round in a couple of weeks. We'd love to talk to you guys. Thank you for so much for your time. Good luck. Buying shoes online is a long and tiring process. Let me tell you a story. So I go to Foot Locker, and I see a wall full of shoes. I browse around, and I find a shoe I like. I go to the salesperson and ask them, hey, can you give me this in two or three different sizes? He goes, he comes back, and I start to take off my shoe, right? And I stand there trying on different shoes if they have them available. I try some on, some work, some don't. And then I realize, hey, there's another shoe I like, and I go through that same process again. Imagine trying to do that online, where you don't have the luxury of trying the shoe on. Do you know how many shoes are bought online? Only 11% of apparel is bought online. And what is bought online, about a third is returned, with the number one reason being size and fit. Let me introduce you to Zori, our solution. Zori will aim to take the nagging question of, will this fit out of that equation? Zori is a standard smartphone application that allows the user to scan their foot. And through image processing, we are able to do the modeling, measurements, and matching. It's accurate to a millimeter, needs no specialized hardware, and the scanning process takes no more than 30 seconds to do. So you might be wondering, who is using this technology and who will be using it, right? And the simple question is, Young professionals like you and I, people with disposable incomes that would like to buy online, both men and women. And actually, um, a small fun fact is men buy more shoes online than women do. So ladies, you've got to run for your money here. Uh, we're also not forgetting the parents in the audience. In the future, we are looking to support children. Um, like any parent knows, buying for your kids is a long and tiring process when you have to do it multiple times a year with different sizes. Uh, the, size of the, pot the, the potential size of the e-apparel market is $1.3 trillion, with a compound annual growth rate of 16%. And speaking of markets, we're looking at the United States, followed closely by Europe, and finally, and last but not least, the Middle East, which is the leading growth in the e-commerce industry globally. So good job, guys. And to speak of our competition, uh, who are our competitors? We have a few of our competitors. Um, some of them do similar things, while others aim to achieve different objectives. But what I do know, what we do is, we provide a simple application that allows the user to scan their foot, go on partner sites, and find the things that they want to buy easily. It's a very simple application that aims to do that seamlessly. And how much will that cost us to do? It'll cost us $350,000 to achieve the first $1 million in revenue. And you might be wondering, hey, when will you achieve those? Uh, actually, we'll achieve them in the first year. Uh, we'll achieve $1.4 million in the first year. And that is namely from the subscription fee we provide our partners, because we aim to increase their conversion rates and lower their rates of return. In 24 months, we aim to achieve $3.7 million from the subscription fee model growing and from secondary revenue streams, such as search, analytics, and ratings. We're currently being accelerated in Jordan with lovely Oasis 500, and we're being accelerated in Silicon Valley as well with Plug and Play. And uh, uh, we're currently raising our round. 
And before I walk off the stage barefoot, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ahmed Saad Din. I'm the CTO at Project X. We're currently rebranding as Project IO. And I'd like to leave you with a small trivia question that you can find me off stage to answer. How many people do you think have their left foot larger than their right foot? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's give these guys a big round of applause. This is a big audience. Congratulations to everyone who's presenting. Uh, before I let you guys go for lunch, just a few a tiny announcements. First of all, uh, every year we have the People's Choice Award for the startups. Our judges will be selecting their favorites, but you can be selecting your favorites as well. Log on to our website at arabnet.me and start voting. The important announcement. How many people here were at the event last year? Raise your hands. <clears throat> How many of you attended the Taste of Beirut dinner? Okay, great. So the Taste of Beirut dinner is an absolute highlight of the event. You should not miss it. We will have 14 different restaurants and uh, beverage businesses from Lebanon serving their best dishes, everything from Chinese to Italian and Ethiopian. If you've never tried Ethiopian, great opportunity to do so. There'll be wine, there'll be beer, there'll be uh, cocktail bars. There's going to be a band and live entertainment. Uh, there will be buses leaving the hotel here at 7.45 p.m., and at 8 p.m. to take you to the venue at the Beirut Digital District. Uh, you can feel free to join us there directly, uh, but there will be buses leaving here, and there will be buses bringing people back at around 11, 11.30. Uh, in your bag, there are two invitation cards. Feel free to bring a friend, a plus one, or someone you want to impress uh, with you to the dinner tonight. A uh, couple more things. Lunch will be served shortly. Uh, after the break, we will be splitting this hall into two. We'll be running parallel sessions. Uh, on this side, we will have an interview with Naila Twaini about moving an Nahar to uh, the digital era and uh, that transition, followed by a number of discussions on technology and advertising. On that side, we will be having a number of sessions focused on the startup economy, including some of the acquisitions that took place uh, in Lebanon, uh, talking about their experience. Uh, enjoy the lunch, and we'll catch up with you in a little bit less than an hour. Thank you.